So it's been well over a month since I tested the A750 in my personal rig. I did the 30 day challenge of using the R card to really just test it in its full capacity. I wanted to see how it gamed. I wanted to see how it worked with professional apps. And I did a video which I'll link down below. You guys can check that out if you haven't. Um, in this video, I wanted to actually cover something that comes up quite often. It's a question that I get from mostly customers. And I do believe that there were a few comments on that video. Some of you guys actually said that I had not enabled rebar. Rebar was definitely enabled in that video. So I just want to get that out there. But I want to test it on a platform that does not have rebar enabled and this is the oldest platform i think i could use with it something like a 6700k or 7700k would probably be better any of the ddr4 stuff but i'm going to test this on a ddr3 4790k system just to see if we can even use it and the reason why i want to do this is because these cards are very cheap now you can get them for a really good deal second hand market they're even cheaper uh, I would totally suggest something like a 6700 XT or a 6600 XT instead of this card if you're just using it for gaming. But say you wanted to buy this card and then upgrade the rest of your system later, holiday season's coming up. That is a uh, option and I wanted to see if it even works at all. So let's get into that test. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I ran into a lot of problems trying to record this video. I uh, ran into issues with stuttering whenever OBS was running. Uh, everything looked like shit. Pretty much all gameplay is gonna kind of look like shit going forward, so I apologize in advance. I'm trying to run everything off the Intel system itself, the 4790K. And although it does work at times, there are just massive hangups, massive stuttering and strange uh, artifacting and behavior. So this is all coming because of the weird mixing of this card with an improper platform, I believe. So I just wanna put that out there ahead of time and let's just get into the benchmarks. Welcome to Modern Warfare 3, the game that should have been DLC for Modern Warfare 2. And so far, I'm, I'm actually kind of enjoying this game. It's not terrible. I like the multiplayer. The campaign I have not touched. I usually do play the campaigns, but man, the reviews were pretty bad. So I might skip that for now and just play uh, multiplayer. But let me get into a few things real quick. Um, so this is where it gets a little complicated. First of all, if you look at my character, it's artifacting like crazy. I don't know what's going on with that. There's a few real weird things that happen. Um, and you can see it right there on the screen. So I tried many things to record this using the AV1 encoder that comes packed in with this card. This is like one of the best features of this card. If you're buying, you know, if you're looking for a budget card, AV1 is awesome. I cannot get it to work without crazy stuttering. I'll actually throw up a little clip. I had this webcam right now that I'm using. I was actually using my Sony SLR and I had it all hooked up and it was running so poorly that I had to stop using it in that configuration using AV1. And I decided to just throw the EVGA XR1 capture card on. Um, even not using my camera, I couldn't get it to work right. I, it's like, it was just such a mess. So now that I got everything kind of synced up, it still doesn't look great. You know, we're running at 1080p, but my quality is pretty much on normal and low. Uh, motion blur off. And then I am using the Intel XESS on the balanced preset. So without further ado, let's just jump into a game and see how this performs. So right out of the gate, I've been just using the default uh, loadouts that have actually been they're pretty good. The first one here with the sniper rifle also has this MCW machine gun. Uh, so not bad, but yeah, so far every map in this game is some old map, which, you know, it's not bad for nostalgia purposes, but when you're trying to buy a new game, it's kind of a little bit lame 
So yeah, so far we're sitting in the 70s, which, you know, it really depends on the map. I, I've noticed that this game can have uh, maps that go down into the 50s on this card. Um, when I hit record, the performance drops quite a bit too. So it's like, you're going to have to like kind of compensate for that. So add another 10 FPS on top of most of these recordings. And uh, that's, that's how it will play without doing any video recording. Um, that being said... Like I said before, you really shouldn't be doing this pair at all. But let's just say you got one for Christmas, you know, your mom picked you up the Intel card instead, and uh, you really wanted that NVIDIA card, but you got the Intel card. Not saying NVIDIA is much better, they're pretty crap right now too, but what you really should be getting is a AMD RX 6600 XT or a 6700 XT. That would be a perfect combo for a setup. Even this old, because it'll run really well. You don't need rebar. You don't need any of the bologna sandwiches that are required. One other thing about this game that just drives me absolutely nuts is it's so clustered. Like, there's just so much stuff going on. You have Warzone. You have Modern Warfare 2. Uh, Black Ops and Vanguard are not even in my library, but it's like, it prompts me to install it. Um, if I need to get to the benchmark, if anyone wants to know where the benchmark is, you gotta go down to Modern Warfare 3, go all the way over to Private Match. Once you hit Private Match, you can hit Benchmark. So let's just see what the benchmark numbers give out, and uh, just remember to take a few frames per second off the top. Um, yeah. All right, so everyone knows Cyberpunk, and Cyberpunk runs really good on all different types of hardware. It's come a long way from the beginning when it first came out, it was a complete mess. But uh, with this configuration, we're gonna run the balance preset with the XE Super Sampling 1.1. Everything else is gonna be on medium and low settings. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'll turn this up to 16. Yeah, so that's the settings, no ray tracing, because I feel like it'll totally crash the system. And uh, yeah, let's see what's going on with this. Also, I did turn on the frame graph up here just to show you guys kind of how bad it can get occasionally. Right now we're in an area that's uh, it's not too bad to run, but if actually, if I turn around and go back to this bridge behind me, you'll start to see some pretty big dips in the FPS, just like randomly. Um, this is the first time I've booted this game on this configuration, so it could have just been, uh, maybe it was like working the shaders out, but Let's see here, up here. Yeah, it seems, I mean, it's it's a little bit better. No, there we go. Dropping into the 50s real quick. So, I don't know if it, it has to do with the CPU just being literally slammed. I mean, over there, that was really bad. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so something's up with this. So, the CPU is at 90%, and uh, there seems to be something causing it to stutter real heavily. Let me see if I can uh, mess around with the settings. Maybe if I go all low and let's see if that does anything. Be right back. Guys, we have these settings on all low and as you can tell, there has been no progress here. This game is running absolutely terrible. Um, this has to be due to the platform. I can't imagine it being anything else. I've tested this card in my own personal rig for an entire month. Um, this is actually the card that's supposed to go to my cousins. He has not picked it up yet, but it's the exact same card from the original review. This is not a new A750. So I know for a fact that this card runs this game perfectly fine as I tested it multiple times. So this has to do with the 4790K and the rebar and all the issues that come with running an older platform. So I think what I'm gonna do is instead of testing these games that most reviewers have been testing like The Last of Us, Starfield, all the newer AAA games. I'm going to test a few games that are more like basic and easier to run. Alright guys, moving on to CS2. So this game is definitely playable. Um, one thing I noticed that when I was uh, recording this, I had a lot of trouble with stuttering. If the game is on the windowed preset and you're trying to record it, it's uh, not going to work very well. And it's still having some... Uh, hard dips occasionally too I noticed 
So I, I can't tell if it's like a CPU limitation and the fact that I'm trying to run OBS on this system and this game and it's just, I don't know, it's causing some kind of an issue, but it doesn't work well in that configuration. But if you, if you wanna play it standalone and you're not streaming it or trying to record it, you can actually play it just fine. Seems to run around 80 frames per second, something like that, which again, this is not a great configuration. That's a terrible number. Um, also, as you can tell, I'm playing a bot match because I absolutely suck at this game. But yeah, I don't want to waste too much of your time on this. It does run. It's not the best experience at all. It should be a uh, very high frame rate experience. All right, so next we have Doom Eternal. And if you watched my last video, at the very end of that video, I tried running the arc card on this exact same system using Windows 11. When I first booted it up, the screen would artifact like crazy and it would kind of stay like that for a while. Um, this did the same thing for a short period of time on Windows 10 and seems like it's gonna run okay. Like as you can see, we're getting a 280 FPS currently, but the second I press space to continue, you're gonna see the frame rate drop to about 30, 25 range and it will stay like that no matter what settings I, I dial in. I tried high, I tried low, I've tried all different settings, I've exited the game, I've tried to change as many things as possible to get this to run above 30 frames per second, and it does not. So I'm going to show you real quick, just to give you an idea of how bad it is. Um, the latency is just atrocious, it's like, this is, this is worse than uh, Cyberpunk was. So I don't know what's going on here, I know that a lot of people said that um, Bethesda doesn't work well like they haven't optimized this game at all for arc so there's a lot that could be going on i can barely play to be honest it's like that bad at times the uh i'll show you the settings really quick before i drop out of this i am basically on nadp all low settings and again if i change this to high or medium it's not going to do anything so kind of a bummer for the next game, we are testing probably everyone's least favorite Far Cry for some reason. Um, I haven't played enough of this to know why people like or dislike it. It seems to have kind of like a lukewarm reception, but I can tell you this. It does run really good on this setup, all things considered. So I'm running everything on the high setting, not ultra just because ultra is kind of dumb. Um, all the DXR reflection, reflections and shadows are off. Fidelity Cas is off. And then under advanced settings, I do have FSR on the ultra quality preset. And you'll be surprised to see that this game does run around 90 to 50 FPS. So 50 being worst case scenario, but it does actually give a very playable, stable experience, which to be honest is pretty uh, strange. You know, you would think the Dunia engine, like an older engine like this would not run that good on the arc card considering uh you know the problems it has with other games so i decided to take the baddest whip in the whole game this uh john deere and yeah so the frame rate driving around at one mile per hour sitting in the 60s and 50s it does drop into the 40s occasionally so you know it's not perfect but um yeah if i had a faster car too i believe it would go down quite a bit more just because well you're producing more geometry faster, so you need to make up for that. Um, right now, traveling at one mile per hour, you know, we're producing horse running speed geometry. Yeah, so this is the driving in Far Cry 6 on an ARC A750 with the wrong configuration. But this game is definitely playable. I mean, it still is a beautiful game, so if you're really looking for you know, some reason to play a AAA game and you're pissed off about how Arc is not working great on your old platform you bought in like 2021 for $900, this could be the game for you. Oh man, look at that frame rate. It's not good, guys. I had a lot of hope for Apex Legends. Apex Legends almost always runs amazing. And I'm sure it runs really good on this card when it's not paired with this configuration. Again, I have to keep reminding everyone that just in case people are like, you're running it wrong. Um, <laughs> so we're at 1080p. Um, these are the settings, 
You know, I got high. Actually, let's just change this to medium. Just for the hell of it. And, uh, yeah, everything else is like a mixture of medium and low. Um, we can... Let's just disable these. Let's pretend like we're doing, like, a competitive match. Match. Uh, 48 FPS so far. So just watch the stutters and frame times here. It's gonna slide down here. It's not stuttering too bad, which actually is uh, kind of nice, but we're not breaking 50 FPS right now. So I don't know what's going on with this game. Um, the second I set any of those textures to high, which the RK750 should be able to run this game at high, absolutely no problem. Um, there, are, There's just so many issues, you know, it's like, I don't even know. You look at the skybox, you get a solid 130, 40, but anywhere else, it's uh, it's not too good. This is kind of sad. I was hoping that this game would run really good. So when you're running this system, you're running PCI 3. So you're not running the PCI 4, and that's pretty much required, I think, to get these cards to work correctly. We're actually sitting in the 80s now. That's kind of nice. But this is an area that has less going on, and it's stuttery, you know? It's not good. None of this has been good. This has been one of the worst experiences I think I've had gaming on a GPU, and... I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't recommend this to anybody. All right, so this is kind of the conclusion segment of this whole video. I had a bunch more benchmarks too, and I decided not to include them because it's just a waste of your time and it's a waste of my time. So first of all, the 1060 that I use to install Windows actually works perfectly fine. I was able to get really clean, beautiful images and recordings out of it. So I know for a fact that it's just the ARC card paired with this configuration. I have tried hours and hours of things trying to get it to look nice, to look good. I just can't figure it out. I've had an easy experience on my own personal rig putting the ARC card in, running AV1, running all its features. So there's no problem there. It's not the card's fault. It's just the compatibility, the backwards compatibility. So if you end up buying a card like this because you have an old configuration and you're like, I'll just deal with it. I don't know if it's worth it. I would say just go AMD if if you can, you know, like especially if you're just playing games, this just don't don't deal with this. If you if you don't want to have problems, <laughs> don't buy. Like right now, the screen is uh, discolored for some reason, and I'm gonna go figure that out in a minute. I might have to like reinstall a driver or something, but um, yeah, I I would say stay away from it. If you're if you got one and this is like your last resort, you have to plug it in. You can use it. It's just not going to play well. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you liked the video, um, I'm surprised because uh, this was a rough video. And uh, yeah, sub if you want to sub, drop a like. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.